What's good, YouTube? It's Quintessential Q coming at you with another The First Descendant video. My apologies for my video being so spaced out since my last video. That video was like almost two weeks ago. But one, grinding up builds takes a lot of time and a lot of resources. So I'm not able to spit out these videos as fast as I would like to. And two, uh, personally, I think a lot of people appreciated the in-depth build video guides that I do, so I kind of want to keep that same quality as far as like my videos are concerned. And when it comes to content that's a lot quicker for me to do, like maybe talking about farm spots and stuff like that, even though that could help people optimize their farming, for me, that's just not like the type of videos that I feel like my strengths cater to, right? I'm I'm definitely more of a like a build centric numbers guy. And as far as like the best farm spots and stuff, I guess I can give you my farming routine if y'all are, are interested in a video like that. I can give y'all like what I personally do as far as a farming routine. If you're interested in that type of video, I just leave a comment down below and I'll I'll probably do something like that. But in today's video, I want to talk about build optimization. Um, I do have a Sharon build video planned out in the future. Y'all yeah, do get to see a little bit of sneak peek of that in today's discussion. But I want to talk about build optimization because there's been a lot of talk in the community about should we be building defense? Should we be building HP? Should we be locking our descendants? Which locking a descendants means putting a catalyst in every single spot in your descendant. Even some people go as far as to put a catalyst slot in their sub module, I mean, not their sub module spot. You should always put one there. But putting one in their skill module slot. And I'll go into like why I don't think that's a good thing as far as some other things. Like I said, you should always put a callus in your sub module spot, which is this spot right here, because for those who don't know, if you put a catalyst here, instead of plus 10 capacity, you get plus 15. Another important fact, if all the sub modules in the game currently have this same M polarity looking slot, so if you put this polarity here, this like little symbol that I have in mind, you will be able to put any, like it works for any of the sub modules, like the yellow ones, as well as the blue ones down here. They all have the same polarity slot. A lot of people were asking me how did I have plus 15 as far as like my sub module is concerned. And that is how you do that. Sure. Um, now, when it comes to optimizing your builds, I kind of have like a rule book as far as like what I follow as far as optimizing my builds. And it kind of goes, what does the game require? What does my character require? And what does, like, what do I want to add as like my personal tech, right? And it kind of goes in that list. Now, why I put what, what does the game require slightly above what does my descendant require is because, of course, in normal mode, you can build whatever, right? In normal mode, you can kind of build whatever and get through the game with little to no difficulty. But when we're in a hard mode content, and which is why a lot of this discussion about HP and defenses have came up, is that people need to be able to survive in harder mode content. Obviously, if you're going down constantly, not only is that a DPS loss for yourself, but if you're in the team, that is a DPS loss for the team overall, because now someone has to pick you up. So you're not doing damage because you're downed, and your teammate, whoever is picking you up, is not doing damage to the boss because they have to pick you up, or vice versa. Someone else went down and you have to pick them up. You're not doing damage because you got to pick someone else up. They're not doing damage because they're downed. So, like, survivability is important. So, the game and hard mode content requires you to be able to survive. And unless you're just Goku with the Ultra Instinct out here and dodging every move possible, you need defenses. You need health, right? You need 
me to be able to survive. My rule of thumb, and it's been working for me as far as this build is like this game is concerned, is one HP mod, one defense mod, right? One increased HP maxed out, one spear and shield maxed out. It's been working pretty much across the board for me as far as my descendants. Now, obviously, before people raise their pitchforks and be like, well, I play Kyle and I need shields or I play Enzo and I, yes, of course, this is a case by case basis. If your character cares more about shields than HP, then build shields, right? If you're Glay and you only have health, don't be putting increased shields obviously it's a character by character basis but for the most part i do not dedicate more than two slots for survivability is what it that's that's the rule no more than two slots for survivability right one for defense one for health if it's both gotta be shields because your character cares about shields whatever obviously someone like ajax might break this rule a little bit right and that's when we get to what does your character want right the game wants me to survive ajax also wants shields well those things go hand in hand they're they're both synonymous with each other so obviously you can bend the rules here because like what does the game want and what your character wants both line up equally right now the next thing is what does your descendant want we got it and we touched in a little bit on that as far as characters like ajax and like enzo and kyle who care about shields and they have like some variation of like shield interaction play with like increased hp she has an interaction with that things like that but even more so as far as uh when it comes to your skills and abilities right like you want to take a look at that and see well do i have longer cooldowns because then maybe if i have like extremely long cooldowns maybe i need cooldown reduction do my skills cost a lot like do i feel like i can only cast like four or five abilities before i'm out of mp and i'm like scrambling for it and like an energy pickup do I need to reduce skill calls? Do I need to reduce skill cooldown? Do I need more duration, right? Do I have like a buff that's like a duration buff that I can give to like either myself or to other people that's based on like skill duration? Things like that is how you find out by like reading through your skills, kind of seeing like their base stats, seeing does your cooldowns look good, seeing do your costs look good, seeing if things like your duration looks good obviously if i'm doing outpost right i would not be using overcharged edge right because overcharged edge reduces my invis to five seconds so if i want to do the outpost stealthily with sharon i need to take out overcharged edge and maybe put in duration because that's what my character needs in order to be able to do that type of content the content requires me to be stealthy and to do it as stealthily as possible, or at least to break the little uh, nodes stealthily without being detected for those extra drops. So that requires me to be invis longer than like a void intercept where I'm only popping invis just for the damage buff. So this discussion on like, what does my character need is very important because this, like i will say section one what does the game need requires from you and section two what does your character needs is pretty much 80 to 90 percent of your build right that's 90 percent of your build once you figure those two things out the rest of the build is pretty much straightforward and easy now the last section is what what is your personal tech because of course you want to make the build unique to you or at least you want the build to suit your play style so for me that was multi-talented and shot focus as far as like the gun base build goes means more so multi-talented than shot focus i would say multi-talented was like that mod that was like nah this I need this in the build. A lot of Sharon builds that I saw like early on was not using 
multi-talented. Some of them was using Dangerous Ambush, which I tested out a little bit, didn't like it. Some people were not using like a yellow mod in this slot at all. So things like that. What is like your personal tech? So like someone might like Dangerous Ambush more than I do and want to put in Dangerous Ambush. They would definitely have the space for it. So like they, they would be able to do that, right? Someone might like another mod altogether over Dangerous Ambush and Multi-Talented to suck it there, right? Someone might not like Shot Focus because it reduces your skill power modifier and wants to put something right here. When it comes to mods that are your personal tech, like your personal like sauce as far as your build's concerned, I would advise to keep those mods like do not put a catalyst in those slots if possible i know this game does not give you a ton of capacity to fit all these mods these jokers are expensive right you get like what 10 slots because well i guess 11 because this technically increases your you have 12 slots overall but this increases your capacity it doesn't decrease your capacity and this is almost nothing once you get it like maxed out so like these two slots you really don't gotta worry about it's the rest of these slots that's gonna like eat up your capacity so really finding that balance of like how to mod your capacity is very important uh one quick tip that i like use is don't be afraid to like have a halfway ranked up mod right this is very common in the warframe like community and this is where a lot of my build philosophy did come from uh, especially since this game pretty much copies warframe module build out like build outs like pretty much almost one-to-one -one with a little bit of caveat here and there but um like there's like sometimes in warframe you would not rank up a mod all the way right it is not uncommon in Warframe build videos to see like a mod that's like one from the top or two from the top, right? Like, so in the case of Focus on Fusion, instead of having this ranked up like all the way, I would have it like halfway ranked up. And this comes in to handy with like mods that have a positive effect, but it's also giving you a negative effect. Now, in this case, fifth, minus 15% skill power modifier is not the end of the world but there's definitely negatives in this game that's a lot steeper than that right that's a little bit more important than just me losing 15 percent skill modifier or in this case 15 percent mp like these negatives don't really warrant me like having this like halfway ranked up because like what i'm gaining versus what i'm losing isn't like the biggest thing in the world but there's other ones out there that is a little bit more steep. I wouldn't say anything too crazy. Maximize Conservation does take away a little bit more skill power modifier. Um, there's like mods in the game that give you actually increased skill uh, cost or increased skill cooldown. Like it makes your cooldowns longer instead of decreasing your skill cooldowns. So mods like that you kind of want to balance the positive and the negative and sometimes the best way to go about that is either using an unranked version or like a halfway ranked up version right so that is one thing that i would say keep like a max ranked mod an unranked mod and maybe one that's in the middle somewhere that way you can always slot them out depending on the build and depending on the character now my like final thing and this is just you can do this at any time this isn't really like super crazy to do but like one thing well, you can always do is monsters, just right? go to the guy and to balance that positive and negative that we were talking about you you can just always just go to this guy and just max out the mod to see like one that has a positive well this is a double positive right but this is giving me like plus 68 like skill modifier and then like as we see no matter if this is ranked out or not 
this cooldown still stays 6.1. Well, in my builds, I only care about this cooldown. So if I'm only, if I don't care about this stat at all, I only care about this stat, and this stat does not increase no matter how much I upgrade this mod, then it might not be worth me wasting these materials to get this for the same amount of cooldown that I get at rank zero, right? The same goes for one that has a positive and negative, even though this is fully maxed out, you would want to level this up as it goes to make sure that negative isn't as severe or as punishing to your build as the positive that you're gaining from it. Now the final thing is using external resources to help plan out your build. One that I stumbled across like going through Reddit is Descendant.Ninja. I will leave a link to the description to this below. This is not like sponsored by the people that made this or anything. Uh, it's just something that I saw on Reddit and thought it was a really helpful tool. And I hope that more tools like this or like they, or this tool just gets like better features to help farming overall. As you see, it has like things like farming assistant, weapons, descendants, modules, like a module list, things like that which is very good. In the builder section, there is a, a couple of like quirky things that you can do. Like if we go into like Lepic, you can put like an absolute zero mod in here, even though that's a VSA mod. Uh, other things that like, if you put a sub module here, it doesn't increase the capacity over here, but it will say that it increases it over here. Like in the base stats, like if I were to put like long distance maneuvering, put that over here, max this out. It says that I get like plus 10 module capacity over here, but it doesn't like increase it up here. So things like that, but like this like resource is like helpful to like plan out your build because you can kind of do things like, okay, well I want to build Sharon, right? Maybe I want to use like battle suit melting rounds, right? The the mod that I don't have. I want to use this mod. I want to rank it out. I want to see how much it costs, like fully maxed out. It costs three fully maxed out. Okay, that doesn't hurt my capacity. I think like the biggest use for this tool is just seeing how expensive your build is going to be, right? Like I said, we my rule of thumb is to have one of like two things devoted to survivability so we're going to do my my go-to mods as far as survivability costs as far as them being maxed out if i don't put a polarity slot right now we're already at 35 capacity right uh nimble fingers put that in there we'll max this out Okay, we're already at 47 capacity. If you wanna add a polarity slot, you can do that just by clicking these boxes under each respective node here. Um, and just matching it with the symbol, of course, to, so that it decreases the capacity. Cause obviously if you pick the wrong one, it's gonna increase the capacity. Just like the game, of course. So doing things like that, well, I know if I have these three mods max ranked out, I'm gonna be at 25 capacity we know according to my sharing build i have like i think 85 capacity overall yeah 85 capacity overall so i know i can go further as far as my build is concerned right and you can change other things like the components and reactors down here you can change that stuff you can like check out your active skills i hope they add like stats and stuff on the side here just so people have because i know a lot of these transcendent mods does like this description they just give you the description of the mod like fire is built in like actually this didn't even change from like me adding this in right battle suit melting rounds i put the battle suit melting rounds mod in and this didn't change so things like that is needs a little bit of cleaning up but this is in beta but i mainly use this to see how expensive my build is going to be and how many catalysts i need and like what can i like leave like maybe halfway ranked up or something like that um in order to like fully finish out my build so that will conclude today's video 
as far as the next couple of videos I have planned, I do plan on putting out an updated sharing video later this week, probably around like Wednesday or Thursday after this video gets uploaded. Uh, there's going to be a tier list video that I'll probably do. That would be after the patch, just because I want to see if any buffs or nerfs affect my opinion of certain characters and how they stack up in the meta. Uh, as well as the SEMO build video, like the, I guess the 1.0 of my SEMO build uh, that I've been working on in the, in the talk. I gotta get a couple things in order before I do that video. That will also probably be after the first, just in case that he gets any buffs. Because a lot of people say that Esimo is like one of the worst characters in the game and he needs buffs. Similar to how they said that Sharon's one of the worst characters in the game and needs buffs. But now people say that she's one of the best bossers in the game, only beaten by Glay and Ultimate Lepic. And I've been kind of saying that since my Sharon build video, but people were doubting me saying I was crazy and that she needs a buff. But yet she's one of the best bosses in the game. I didn't want to, I don't want to say that I'm right, but I'm right. <laughs> anyway, if you like my content, if you like what I provide here as far as these like in-depth guides and like tips and tricks and stuff, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Definitely helps me out. Uh, and look forward to those future videos that will come out sooner than my last, <laughs> the distance between my last video and this video. So I definitely plan on having a lot of content that should be coming out a lot more sooner. Cause I personally just don't like doing build like videos that are like, oh, best farm spot here or how to get 3 million Kuiper here. I feel like um, from the sharing build video, y'all really like these in-depth like guides that I provide. Y'all like how thorough I am with my guides. So I kinda wanna keep providing that content to y'all. But since this game is a grind, it, it, is, whew, it is hard getting energy activators and stuff for these builds. So it, it kind of affects how quickly I can put out that type of content. But if y'all like the content, please comment, like, subscribe. It helps me and motivates me to continue to push through the grind and get this content out, out to y'all. But until the next one, deuces.